from the campus of Iowa Western, you're watching your hometown information station, CBTV 17. Hello and welcome to Council Bluffs News. I'm Kenneth McDaniel, in for Rebecca Ray. This is a shorter version of your hometown news this week, but it still packs a punch. And we start with an announcement bringing a $300 million investment to Council Bluff. Google announces plans to build a second data center here in the Bluffs, and with it creates new jobs. Okay. Here we go. With a signal from Iowa's governor, construction vehicles roll in signaling another economic development in Council Bluffs. They've become an important part of the community. The investment in the school district, the investment in Iowa Western Community College, the investment in Council Bluffs and, and, and that we've expanded our Wi-Fi just in downtown. Not only talk about today, but it talks about the future. And what they have done in our community has been incredibly changing to our community. And obviously this announcement today makes a difference to the community today, but it also makes the future of Council Bluffs and Potawatomi County a better place to live. On Tuesday, April 24th, Google officials announced their plans to build a second data center just south of Council Bluffs. The $300 million center will be located near the Bungie soybean plant near Overland Trail off the Wabash Trace. And Google's decision to increase the size of its data center in Council Bluffs highlights the attractiveness of our state as a place to invest as well as do business. Chris Russell with Google said the new plant could bring with it 50 new jobs in southwest Iowa. What means that we think Council Bluffs is a great place to do business. Uh, not only do you have all the things we need as far as land and connectivity and power, but you also have a really good workforce and uh, the local leaders, both, both the city and the state, have made this an attractive business climate for us. In 2009, Google opened their first center in Council Bluffs at the cost of $600 million. Their continued investment in the Bluffs shows Google is committed to Council Bluffs' future. So Google has just been a great partner with the state of Iowa in helping us uh, be able to do things better, to be able to do things more efficient, be able to get the word out to people about the great opportunities that are in this wonderful state. Here in Iowa, we're proud to be able to help our friends and neighbors. It's the Iowa way of doing things, and Google has consistently demonstrated that same kind of personal commitment working on behalf of the citizens of Iowa and of Council Bluffs. On behalf of all of us, Google, thank you for choosing our area and expanding here in Iowa, Pottawatomie County, and, and, and Council Bluffs. Google did not announce when the center will be completed, but they are already taking applications. If you would like to apply for a job, visit www.google.com backslash console bluffs. We now catch Iowa spirit with photojournalist Daniel Johnson as he laces up his shoes for Sunday, April 22nd, Gambler Half Marathon. This is my first time for the Gambler, yes. I'm excited for it. Um, it's cold. I'm ready to start running. <laughs> I'm ready to get going. This is our third Gambler Half Marathon and 5K, and we're uh, one of the main sponsors for this event, and we're really excited to have people in our community. Um, it really helps with tourism, and it helps bring people together, and it's just a great event, and we're just so pleased to be involved in this event. It's a personal battle with yourself. Once you get up to mile 10 or 11 and your muscles start cramping up and you don't want to quit, so that's when it just becomes a battle and really a mind game with yourself. I would just say I think they had it pretty well planned out and I think it's nice for all the volunteers to come out and support the runners while we're doing it. It's, I mean, it's nice to have people cheering you on. Be sure to catch Iowa Spirit at the top of every hour right here on CBTV Channel 17 are on Facebook at Facebook forward slash Iowa Spirit. April is Child Abuse Awareness Month and Jenny Edinson Hospital is hosting their annual Family Health and Safety Fund Fair to keep you educated on child safety. We join Rebecca Ray and Jean Armstrong for this week's interview segment. 
Welcome back to Council Bluffs News. I'm Rebecca Ray. They are the national symbol of Child Abuse Awareness Month. 1,303 blue ribbons around the flagpole at Jenny Edmondson Hospital called the Circle of Caring Project. And here to visit with us today about the event and how to educate your whole family is Jenny Edmondson's Family Resource Manager, Jean Armstrong. Thanks for joining me today, Jean. Thank you for having me. So talk to me about this event coming up that Jenny Edmondson is hosting. Well, April is Child Abuse Awareness Month, and for that month, we're doing a lot of activities out in the community. One of them was the teen volunteers got together and created Circle of Caring Project. And these Circles of Caring are 1,303 children that were abused last year in Council Bluffs in Pottawatomie County. So we wanted to show some type of symbol of those children that were abused in Pottawatomie County and hope next year that number is lower. That is just an astonishing number for it these is. children. Um, and you know sometimes it just happens when parents get overwhelmed and overstressed. What are, what are 10 ways uh, parents can just calm down and just take steps to not uh, create child abuse in, in a home? Right. One of the things I do out in the community is I go to junior highs and high schools and talk to new parents on ways to prevent shaken baby syndrome. And there are many ways to prevent child abuse. It might be, um, you know, putting your baby down in a safe place like a bed or a crib and just walking away. Um, take a couple of deep breaths, call a friend, tell a neighbor to come over and watch your kids, uh, get involved in a parenting class, call the hospital, get involved in preventing child abuse in our community, uh, working with the Shaken Baby Task Force and prevent, another group we have is uh, the Prevent Child Abuse uh, Coalition through uh, the Pottawatomie County to, uh, Coalition to Prevent Child Abuse. So there's many different groups that you can work with in the community and I'd be happy to give you those uh, resources later on. And Jean, you actually go out to the public, um, to schools and educate um, mm -hmm. young teenagers about child abuse. But I mean, some, some folks would wonder why at such a young age are you uh, spreading this message? Uh, well, I go to the junior highs and high schools because a lot of them are babysitters, number one, or they have infants in their home. And so then I always tell them, take this message back to your parents and tell them what you learned about the prevention of shaken baby syndrome. Then they also share that information with their friends, uh, their parents, their grandparents, really any, everybody in the United States needs to know about what to do when you can't get a baby to stop crying and ways to prevent shaken baby syndrome. And folks can actually find more education at the uh, the Health and Safety Fair coming up. It's the right. fifth annual Health and Safety Fair. Talk to me about what's going to be going on there. Well, it's our fifth annual. It's the Family Health and Safety Fun Fair. It's coming up at the end of April. Rain or shine, it's on April 28th, and it's at the First Church of the Nazarene. And we decided to have it there because we have a lot of activities, outdoor activities, indoor activities. It's free and open to the public and it's from one to three. And we're gonna have face painting, fire trucks, the smokehouse, we're gonna have healthy snacks for kids, cooking with Elaine. Uh, she's gonna be cooking inside in the church, in the kitchen. And we're gonna have an exercise class for kids from two to three. We're gonna have a lot of booths with games, prizes, arts and crafts, um, it's going to be free and it's going to be fun for the whole family. There's a lot of stuff going on that day. A lot. We want to also teach parents that while they're there is how to prevent child abuse and how to have fun with your family. So we're going to have a lot of games and activities that are family oriented. Okay. And it's all free and open to the public. That sounds like a great opportunity for families just to get out there and even, you know, just have a little bit of a stress relief and have a good day with their family. That's right. That's why we decided to make it fun. Well, thank you so much for stopping in. Hopefully this helps spread your message about just safety and uh, child prevention, right? child abuse prevention. And the fifth annual Family Safety Fun Fair is sponsored by the Shaken Baby Task Force and Prevent Child Abuse, Pottawatomie County. Okay, perfect. 
Once again, the fifth annual Family Health and Safety Fun Fair is Saturday, April 28th from 1 to 3 p.m. at the First Church of the Nazarene at 26th and Avenue A. It's free and open to the public. We hope to see you there. More Council Bluffs news is up next. Thanks for joining us this week for your hometown news. If you have any questions, comments, or story ideas, please contact us at cbtv at iwcc.edu or call us at 712-325-3312. From all of us at CBTV Cox Channel 17, I'm Kenneth McDaniel. See you next time. From the campus of Iowa Western, you're watching your hometown information station, CBTV 17. come to Walnut because it's a tourist town and because of the antiques that are here it draws people from all over the United States and uh, I felt like having a taste of homemade bread would be an addition to the town. Uh, we hear over and over again how good it is to be able to have some homemade products. Uh, it's a lot of work uh, but we enjoy it and it comes from in here and you use your hands. So we have a lot of tender love and care that what goes into our product. We opened about nine years ago and uh, not knowing what the market was going to really bear because uh, we were just the two of us at that time. We did not want to get into a position where you could not handle it. But what we found out was the word of mouth just spread. The word got out really fast that we were here and what we offered and it, it worked. Uh, we have people that pretty well support us uh, on a 50 mile radius on a regular basis. I've been in the industry uh, since 1962 and I have seen a lot of changes over the, the years. Uh, a lot of modifications have taken place. A lot of government controls have been activated. Uh, so a lot of things have changed when it comes to the operation and the ingredients levels uh, to, be, to be used. But um, I would love to see young people get into this business and keep the business alive because we need more retail bakeries. Uh, I invite anybody that would like to have a taste of something uh, unique to uh, visit Walnut, Iowa and stop at the bakery. There's more to teach them regarding singing and regarding the history of our country through jazz. I'm a firm believer that jazz is basically a forerunner to, um, in, a, in, a, in a stepping stone way, it's a forerunner to what the things are that the kids are listening to on the radio Same now. Same energy, half volume. You gotta keep it honed. You gotta keep it sharp all the time, okay? I'm not talking pitch sharp. It has to be right on. Uh, Trainer Jazz Choir is directed under Roger Jensen, and he's been there for many years. We've been very good friends, and they are very strong into the jazz program. He's always had a very successful Every jazz choir from year or to year. Something along that line, be really getting into it, and the other person being a statue. Jazz choir doesn't have choreography 
The idea that there should be at least, with all singing, there should be at least some facial expression to help tell what's going on. Are you going to just stand there like a statue and sing, and it might sound beautiful, but are you physically, facially, and somewhat emotionally connecting with the audience as well? Roger gets out a lot in the jazz choir. He takes his students to state contests and to different area contests like our River Jazz Choir Contest and he gets them exposed and they listen to a lot of jazz music and that makes them very successful. Competitions are a great motivator for students. It really is. When it comes to the root or the essence of what music is about, music is not really supposed to be about competitions. But with high school kids, if you really want to drive them to get better at something, um, if you say, we want to get this done because we're going to go compete at XYZ, then, then there's that motivation behind them that they want to be able to say, well, we, we competed against these schools and this is where we fell in that area. Typically throughout a day what would happen is you would go to wherever the hosting school is, try to get there ahead of time, get a feel for the auditorium, and then you know make sure the kids are all changed into their outfits and everything. Back to your spots, gum out, blah blah blah, you know. Uh, hit the warm-up room ahead of time. From the warm-up room onto the stage to perform for the judges. different contests will give their results in different forms. Sometimes they'll do it at the end of their, each class. Some will wait if, till the end of the day, uh, that sort of thing. A lot of great kids um, over the last 17 years, not, not even just the jazz choir, but in, in general, really, but really, really then to be able to take uh, those that had the desire to try the, okay. the jazz yeah, choir scene done, and and to go farther. Um, I've, I've really been blessed with a lot of great singers and performers. No that that's really, you know, as far as jazz music itself, that's one of the great things. It's, it's not me, it, it's, it's the kids willing to take chances even sometimes on some of the things that they're doing and, and realize, hey, it did work, it panned out. Hi, I'm Kathy Fiscus from the Council Bluffs Convention and Visitors Bureau with some things that are going on this April. Mystery book lovers, the Council Bluffs Public Library will have a discussion of American Lightning by Howard Blum Tuesday, April 3rd from 7 to 8.30 at the library in room 2D. The library is located at 400 Willow. There's always something going on, so call 712-323-7553 for more information. And Saturday, April 7th, is the Park and Recreation Annual Easter Egg Hunt. The hunt starts at 10 a.m. for kids up to 10 years old. Roberts Park is located at 1000 North 25th Street in Council Bluffs. The Fire and Police Department will have some really cool equipment for the kids to look at as well. If you need more details, call 712-328-4650. Friday the 13th, is Second Fridays in downtown Council Bluffs. Enjoy art, music, wine from 6 to 9 p.m. Start at 500 Willow or South Main for a really uplifting evening. And Hitchcock Nature Center has a couple of great events in April. Kinder Nature is April 15th and the topic is incredible eggs. Kinder Nature is for three to five year olds with a parent and is just four dollars per child. Discover the differences between bird, reptile, and other eggs on a hands-on environment.
Call 712-545-3283 for more information. And also at Hitchcock Nature Center, April 21st is the spring scavenger hunt hidden in the hills. 8, 9 a.m. to noon, teams use their senses in the Lust Hills to follow clues. Teams of two to five people can register for $10. Six to 10 cost 20. Please register by April 16th though. That's really important. So call Kelly at 712-328-5834. Hitchcock Nature Center is really close by in Honey Creek, Iowa. And start training now for the Gambler Half Marathon and 5K on April 22nd. This year the races will start and end in the Mid-America Center area. Log on to thegamblerhalf.com to register online. The race will start at 8 a.m. Packet pickup will be the day before. Then plan to attend Viva Brazil in feet on the ground at the Art Center on the Iowa Western Community College campus, April 25th at 6.30 p.m. Dancers will perform rhythms of Salvador, Afro-Brazil, and more to get your heart pumping. Tickets are just $8 a person and just $5 for seniors and students. So call the Art Center at 712-388-7140 to reserve your seat. Looking ahead, May is full of events, and a new one is Peterbilt Council Bluffs Truck Show. Peterbilt is at I-80, I-29, exit 1B North. Registration is from 8 to 11 a.m., and awards are at 4 p.m. All trucks are welcome. Log on to www.pbtrucks.com or call Bruce at 712-328-7736. And one more note. The Union Pacific Railroad Muse Museum will be closed April 8th to 11th to install a new display. I'm Kathy Fiscus with the Council Bluffs Convention and Visitors Bureau. There's always a lot going on, so check out cbevents.com. We're Iowa Spirit, Council Bluffs. <laughs>